Equity Center India with the support of Garda Chemicals Limited. Today we have Mr. Jayant Umranikar sir with us and he is going to talk and guide us on the topic of cyber crime security or that one must know. India. So let me introduce him to you and then we will begin the session. Umranikar sir is the chairman of ILCI and he had served in the Indian Police Service for almost 38 years. He was selected for deputation to cabinet secretary of New Delhi in 1979, specializing in international communism, Islamic fundamentalism, especially Pakistan. And he has worked as commissioner, special Bureau uh, Mumbai and participated in investigations of the 1993 Mumbai blast and so on. He was deputed to foreign service and served in various Indian diplomatic missions in Africa, Asia, Europe for nearly 13 years. On promotion, he worked as the Director General of Police Special Operations in the Police Headquarter Mumbai, supervising the work of anti terrorism squad and special units. He is a multilingual person and has mastery in foreign languages like Russian and French. He has authored many books and articles on various subjects like Pakistan terrorism, nuclear issues, issues investigations, interrogations, cybercrime, banking security, etc. His last book on police reforms in India acquired a lot of appreciation from all layers of the society. Recently, uh, he's, he has been appointed as the head of the department emeritus professor in Savitri by Philip Pune University. He has received many awards, including Police Medal and President's Medal for Distinguished Services. Thank you, sir, for being here. And I request you to kindly start the lecture. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, welcome everybody. And uh, Yashoda, uh, let's share the screen and start the presentation. The topic is a bit complicated and it's a bit vast also. But I will try to run through the topic as quickly as possible so that we have some time for the question answers also. Am I audible? Am I uh, properly audible to everybody? Okay. Uh, today we are going to discuss cyber crime and the, all that one has to know about it. Next slide. Uh, this is about the importance of cyber security. See, advanced technologies provide us with many benefits. We can communicate, we can do bank transactions, we can avail online services. We can do all kinds of things that are required today. And internet is the tool that we use for this kind of uh, connectivity. But internet also makes us very vulnerable. And uh, some very different kinds of attacks can happen uh, using internet. And even a minor lapse can invite cyber criminals uh, to basically uh, steal our money, damage our reputation and things like that. But remember one thing, 90% of the cyber attacks are invited by human negligence or greed. Therefore, we must be very vigilant while using technology to minimize the cyber threats. Next. Now, what is cyber crime? Technically, the cyber crime is defined as a crime involving computers and networks. Even illegally downloading music files or stealing money from online bank accounts, etc., all these are considered to be cyber crimes. But cyber crimes, cyber criminals are not always financially motivated. Cyber crimes include non-monetary offenses and can include frauds, even matrimonial fraud, for example, stealing sensitive personal information like Aadhaar details, credit debit card details, bank account. Cybercrime will also include defamation of an individual on social media and even distributing computer viruses is part of the cybercrime. Cybercrime in extreme cases can lead to physical as well as sexual abuse when the criminal actually calls you for a meeting. Next. Now, how are these crimes committed? One method is hacking or gaining access to social media accounts. The other is misuse of photocopies of identity proofs. The third is credit debit card skimming. This uh, card skimming we'll discuss in detail later, slightly later. But what the attacker is trying to do basically is he tries to gain access to you. And then when he gets access to you by various methods, either he befriends you, or he starts misusing the personal information that is available on the net, which you yourself have provided. When we talk of the identity proof, uh, you know, we have this tendency of keeping photocopies of PAN card, Aadhaar card, 
and other identity proofs. And many times we keep these copies here and there and we do not realize that these copies could be misused by somebody who does not have good intention. Next slide. So uh, what are the types of crime, uh, cyber crimes? One is the identity theft. The other is digital banking frauds, psychological tricks, attacks through mobile applications, social media related attacks, and virus attacks on personal computer. Next. So what is identity theft? It is an act of wrongly obtaining somebody's personal information or what you call your identity without your permission. It can include name, phone numbers, address, bank account, Aadhaar number, credit debit card number, etc. And once this kind of information is available to the fraudster, he can do anything that you would like to do. He can access to your bank account, apply for loans, file income tax return, obtain driver's license, create new utility accounts, get medical treatment from your health insurance at your expense, Assume your identity on social media, that means project himself to be you on the uh, social media. And even if there is a problem that he has created for himself, he can give your name to the police during the arrest. So this way, the identity can be misused. Next. So what are the precautions to be taken? This is something which is more important from our point of view. Never provide details or copy of identity proofs like PAN card, Aadhaar card, voter card, driving license, address proof to unknown persons or organizations. This is something you have to follow meticulously. Be careful while using identity proofs at suspicious places. At many places, they ask you for identity proof, but you have to be careful in giving those proofs to them. Third is do not share sensitive personal information like date of birth, birthplace, family details, address, phone number on public platforms. Because public platform is something which is available to everybody, not just a person who is against uh, uh, next to you uh, or uh, who is uh, in contact with you, but other people also. Now, for example, photocopy of the identity proof, if you misplace it, that can be misused by a criminal. So the best thing is strike out the photocopy, which is not needed by you, and if you are giving a, a photocopy which is attested by you, please write the purpose for which it has been given. For example, if you are giving a copy of your Aadhaar card for uh, banking KYC, please mention that this copy has been given to the bank for KYC purposes. And then you attest it. This way you will be able to prevent the misuse of the uh, photocopy. And of course, do not leave your credit, debit, or ATM card receipts behind because they also contain details which can be misused. Especially at places where you use them, you should be very careful to pick up everything that is connected either to your card or uh, uh, to uh, your identity. Next. Then there are some psychology tricks which the criminals perform. And this is where actually the old people one ha have to be uh, even more careful than others. What happens is the attacker influences the mind of the user. That means an old person, an old lady, an old man, get friendly, then try to get close, be useful in some way or the other. And then when they get your uh, confidence, then they start exploiting the victim by either stealing the money, sensitive personal information, or harm the victim in many other ways. And many times they trap you by using fake emails, fake calls, fake SMSs. Now, there are technical names for these three things which I have given below. One is the phishing, that is sending fraudulent email. Phishing is uh, instead of email, email the fraudster uses the telephone and switching is where you you use the sms a fraudulent sms basically to extract maximum information from you so whether it is phishing whether it is wishing whether it is smishing these are all funny names what you have to remember is these are the methods of getting in touch with you in order to defraud you next 
So uh, what are the types of frauds and prevention strategies to deal with them? This is what we're going to discuss next. What are the frauds that can be committed? Lottery fraud. Now, I find that this is one of the biggest frauds that keeps on happening and some very important, some very intelligent, and I would say educated people, people have also fallen uh, prey to this kind of lottery fraud. Suddenly, you get SMS saying that uh, Bank of England or some such name, they will say, uh, uh, or they will say Reader's Digest. So you have won a, a prize from Reader's Digest and $25,000 or 25,000 uh, pounds are going to be uh, the prize money. But if you want to get that prize money, please pay $500 first and then after that we'll start the process, etc. A very renowned scientist who has got Padma Award approached me once and said, yes, sir, this is what has happened. I've got this kind of an offer and I intend to send the money. I told him, first thing, did you ever apply for this kind of a prize? Did you ever apply for this kind of a lottery? Have you ever participated in, in any kind of a competition? which will fetch you an award. If you have not, then please remember that this is a fraud. Nobody gives you an award for doing nothing, especially if they're not even in touch with you. So this is, I'm elaborating because this fraud keeps on coming up again and again, almost every day, you will get this kind of a message or you might get an email or any other attempt to influence you to part with your money. And when you part with the money, nothing comes back to you. So you have to be very careful. It can be called lottery fraud. It can be called award fraud. It can be called prize money fraud, anything. But basic uh, modus operandi is this. They tempt you, they take your money and you get nothing in return. Credit debit card frauds are again very common. What happens is suddenly you will get SMS saying that your card has been blocked or uh, they will say that uh, there is something wrong in the KYC that you have sent. Basically, they will make you panic. They want you to be scared that you will not be able to use your credit or debit card. And then they will start asking for sensitive information to rectify the mistake which they say you have committed. Now, just remember one thing. Neither the bank nor the credit card company ever will ask you for any sensitive information. So the first warning sign is if somebody is asking you for sensitive information, it means it's a fraudulent call. Full stop. You should never indulge in anything in any transaction further. Then there are job related frauds. Uh, in fact, especially during the COVID lockdown period, many job related frauds were also committed. Again, getting in touch. Uh, with the victim through either email or SMS offering a job and a job which you can do from home. So work work from home and that was the scheme of this kind of stuff, uh, job related fraud during the COVID period. You have to first understand that unless you collect all the information about the job that has been that is being offered to you you should never go ahead and you should never part with sensitive information. In fact, uh, some people also got a call saying that, why don't you meet me at so-and-so place and there we'll finalize the details. Now, this is a trap. If you go to a place and you are going to meet an unknown person whom you have met only on the social media, that person may not be a benevolent uh, person at all. He might be a criminal and he might uh, cause physical harm also besides uh, stealing the money on you. Next. Now, uh, when we talk of social media frauds, we must understand what is social media. Social media are <clears throat> social media platforms are built and used for broadcasting and messaging apps are built and used for communication. I mean, this is the distinction between messaging apps and the social media platforms. Now, for example, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, these are social platforms and they are designed to broadcast messages to wide audience. Now, uh, if you ask me, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they, they are like, you know, uh, TV channels. You switch the TV channel on and everybody can see what is on that TV channel. 
so this is one way communication you have broadcast everything that you want to the whole world and the world can see it whoever approaches can see it on the other hand whatsapp wechat skype these are messaging apps now in messaging apps the app directs the message to a particular group or or an individual so here there is some kind of slightly uh, better safety than facebook twitter or instagram because this is a two way app but used to communicate only between specific individuals or groups now uh, there was always uh, this uh, confusion in people's uh, mind about the facebook and when uh, there are quite a few uh, comments uh, coming up about facebook and how facebook is going to misuse your uh, uh, personal uh, data etc some people tried to shift to another app and what was that app that was signal very few people knew that since 2014 facebook acquired a signal protocol and signal platform and whatsapp actually uses that signal protocol and signal platform so there is hardly any difference between uh, a whatsapp and a signal the main thing is that signal is not connected to facebook while whatsapp is connected to facebook that's why the apprehension that whatever information you are sharing it might be picked up from the facebook and then misused now social media are extremely useful no doubt about that but one has to be very careful while using social media as we'll see uh, in in the next few slides but remember social media are catching on and it is expected that there would be probably more than 3 billion users in the world uh, by this year next slide so what are the social media frauds um basically social media it's a new way of communicating it's a new way of sharing it's a new way of informing people about the events in your lives you use photographs you give them information about the trips you have undertaken the visits at various places what are your activities many times you give you they give you give them uh, your uh, the whole program of the of the day also you would say that in the evening i am going to visit so and so place etc what happens is you are supplying this information in good faith but not everybody uh, is going to reciprocate that faith and that information uh, can be misused unwanted access to your social media can cause not only loss of information but loss of uh, reputation and there could be even uh, worse uh, situations that can arise if social media contain information that is useful to the criminal next now what are the social media frauds one is sympathy fraud the other is romance fraud sympathy and romance both these frauds uh, old people have to be especially careful about these things as it is you are old you are alone if somebody speaks uh, a few good words with you you feel that this person is sympathetic to me and you want to share the burden of your life with him instead of physical contact the same kind of uh, proximity can be obtained by interacting with you over a longer period through social media uh, suddenly you know uh, i am an old man suddenly some beautiful girl and uh, she gets in touch with me and she says uh, i have been charmed of course not by your old age i have been charmed by your intelligence by your ability etc etc and uh, you start falling for that because every every man has a huge ego and he feels that he will never uh, get old he will always remain attractive to everybody etc but remember that the photograph that is being shared with you maybe of a young girl but actually that site might be managed by somebody else who is a criminal romance fraud is more or less the same thing where you know uh, they try to befriend you then suddenly there will be an offer why don't we meet somewhere or that beautiful girl might might tell you why don't we uh, go to goa for 3 4 days 
spend a few nights there and then come back so you will get ready you will pack your bags you gather whatever you want with you uh, carry enough money to be in goa with her for say for the next one week or so and have good time but when you reach the spot you will find that there is no beautiful girl there there will be two three mustandas standing there and most probably they will rob you they will take away whatever you have brought uh, to the spot i mean this is just one crude example i am giving some of the romance frauds could be very very sophisticated also in fact uh, this uh, modus operandi is used in the uh, intelligence operations also and there are many examples all over the world where uh, what we call the honey trap has been used the olden days it used to start physically now it can start virtually so one has to be very careful about these things cyber stalking stalking is uh, very obvious I, i won't go into details this is where a cyber criminal keeps on pursuing you on uh, whatever websites are available and which any which way he tries to be in touch with you and he keeps on sending nasty messages or trying to hurt you uh, through the messaging or through the photographs and things like that and cyber bullying is the next part of it where that same person starts using a uh, threatening language starts blackmailing that is possible because probably you have sent some photographs uh, which should not have been sent and uh, through cyber bullying uh, one can really make uh, somebody's life uh, life miserable next what are the precautions to be taken so be careful while accepting friend request now many people like to boast that i have so many thousand friends etc but be careful not everybody who appears to be a friend is actually a friend especially the strangers on social media they create a fake social uh, media profile and they befriend potential victims and the intention is only to harm do not share personal details do not get into financial dealings with an unknown person if at all you find that somebody is pursuing you on this on the website keep your family and friends informed so in case you get tempted to meet that person that unknown person at some stage at least the people in the house know where you are going and who you are meeting again as i said in romantic fraud you are not going to tell anybody because on the one hand you want to do something which is very adventurous and on the other you want to hide it away from your family so this is the uh, classical trap situation that comes up so you have to be very careful about this thing never share intimate pictures with anyone and this is something especially applicable i mean all of us are old uh, not many of our intimate pictures will be worth looking at but you have to give this advice to the younger generation especially to your grandchildren i can tell you so many cases where you know a little girl 13 year old 14 year old she exchanges photographs then some nasty photographs start coming from she feels that uh, there is another girl of her age who is sharing the photographs with her and slowly the intimacy increases and ultimately it leads to blackmail it leads to harassment it can lead to all kinds of psychological dramas and things like that so please advise the next generation and especially the grandchildren not to indulge in this kind of exchange of intimate pictures with anybody even if they feel that the person is known in fact in one case it so happened that uh, the school teacher was misusing the social platform and uh, uh, harassing the girls like this so one should never do these things do not share personal details or get into financial dealings restrict access to your profile and especially on the social media if you start sharing your daily program it is like inviting a house breaking for example if you have posted on your facebook that the next 3 days you are going to be uh, in goa enjoying and uh, you know making merry you are basically telling the criminal that for the next 3 days my, my house is going to be 
uh, available for you to create any mischief to commit a housebreaking so please do not share this kind of information on the facebook it looks very jazzy it looks as if you know we are trying trying to score a point over your friends uh, that they are sitting uh, uh, in the lockdown period at their own houses and you are in goa but don't try to score points most of the times you will find that scoring points uh, leads to disaster next one thing i forgot to tell you is if at all by mistake you fall for this kind of a trap if at all by mistake anybody in the family falls for this kind of a trap please keep all the data secure do not try to delete things from your laptop or from your mobile telephones do not try to delete the offensive messages that you have received offensive mails that you have received offensive correspondence between you and uh, the criminal because all this is very important proof you have to keep this in case you want to prosecute the person who has caused harm to you or who wanted to cause harm to you a criminal who was trying to rob you off or who was trying to damage your reputation if you try to delete these things in a hurry thinking that uh, this might create a problem subsequently you are basically destroying evidence which will come very useful in criminal cases so do not delete anything in fact you should share it with others so that a backup is available somewhere in case by mistake your uh, smss or your whatsapp messages or your uh, facebook entries they get deleted then somebody else should also have those entries in fact you can even mention that this copy is being kept deliberately and this is the second copy or third copy whatever you want to say make an entry like that but keep the evidence do not destroy the evidence of a cyber crime that has been committed against you so in conclusion i would like to say that you have to be very careful when you are using uh, social media because it can cause you immense harm at the same time social media is a wonderful tool which helps you to keep in touch uh, with the whole world it can promote your business it can help you in immense ways but just remember that you are always open to cyber crime when you are using social media indiscriminately next now uh, mobile application fraud is another uh, topic most of us are using mobile uh, i would say 24 by 7 and again uh, the same modus uh, someone tries to break into your mobile either it could be through hacking or it could be cyber attack using infected mobile applications and we do not realize that the mobile phone has been hacked because what they use is uh, called uh, trojan uh, trojan is like trojan horse uh, helen of troy you would have heard that story so this is this is something which looks very innocuous but this is an app that can get access to your messages that can take your otp Uh, that can use your camera take over your contacts emails photographs etc so be very careful uh, while you are downloading apps never ever download apps from an unauthorized site next so these are the precautions which you have to take always install mobile apps from official application stores scrutinize all permission requests thoroughly regularly update software and mobile applications to ensure that there are no security gaps and even if you have to use uh, some kind of uh, software to protect your uh, mobile phone please use that don't try to spare money and don't try to save money please ensure that your data remains secure Beware of malicious applications, malicious updates, and please keep on clearing data related to uh, malicious application. Uninstall any app that is undesirable. Now, uh, this is one uh, big point. This is regarding the privacy policy. 
you would have heard a lot nowadays this is this has become a, a very uh, current topic uh, how much privacy does a person need when you go to any app or when you go to any website you will find that they have their own privacy policy and the details of the privacy policy have been given in such a font that you can hardly read it but we are in such a hurry to enter that website or to start using that app that we do not read it and even if we read it the language is so complicated that even a legal advisor may not be able to follow so in the process what happens is because we want to uh, start using that app or we want access to that uh, website immediately we just click the consent but this is not the real consent a consent always has to be an informed consent and because the government does not understand the implications i feel that the regulators have to come up with some kind of privacy rating for the apps but of course this is all uh, i'm talking about the future remember when you enter a website or when you are downloading an app you have to be very careful while giving consent while clicking i agree but surprisingly i find that people are much more careful and cautious while sharing information with the government for aadhar card details we have gone to the supreme court and fought the cases there but the same information we have shared with facebook instagram google all the kind of uh, amazon and things like that uh it's a, it's a very strange phenomenon where we want to share our details with the unknown vendors rather than the known government i don't know whether it speaks good of the government or good of us but this is a fact of life next online banking frauds now uh, this is something which is becoming more and more frequent because banking services are shifting online retrieving account statements fund transfer request for checkbook preparing demand draft everything can be done online and because of that cyber frauds related to banking are also increasing and uh, this is something one has to be very careful about now uh, there are uh, digital payments applications related attacks digital payments have become very common but if you do not have a proper password or if you are using a program uh, which is easily breachable if the account can be easily hacked uh, these things uh, you have to be very careful about and uh, the attacker if he is more savvy than you he is likely to acquire the pa the password he is likely to enter your account uh, he is likely to uh, defraud you uh, using Uh, personal information that he has gathered about you and many times people especially uh, old persons who do not remember the passwords use the same password for many accounts for example if i have one password say jan123 because it's very easy to remember i will keep on using the same password for bank of india also for times for uh, a bank of maharashtra also all my accounts will be having jan123 Please don't do that because once that password is compromised, then all your accounts will get compromised automatically. Next. Now this again is a precaution for digital payments. Never share your mobile unlocking pin or passwords with anyone. I do not want to uh, repeat the same thing again and again, but this is something which which you should not share with anybody, including the. uh the most dear one also what you can do is please keep a diary if necessary if you feel that you are going to forget your passwords or pin keep that diary securely in your locker and use it only when necessary as far as possible try to remember the password and a pin of course you should never share many times uh, i have seen this happening especially if you are traveling abroad they will ask you for a photocopy of your credit card now in good faith you will send the photocopy 
of the whole credit card number including uh, the last details also which you are not supposed to share with anybody so these are the things you should not uh, do and you should take all precautions possible to ensure that nobody can defraud you of your money next again this is about uh, the passwords that the password has to be at least eight character long uh, again i will not go into details but just remember that it's always advantageous to keep on changing passwords if you cannot remember them and believe me not all of us are uh, good at remembering things especially if you want to if you have to change them every three months or six months because some of the banks insist that you must change your password for transaction, uh, for access. So these things should be noted down somewhere systematically. Only thing is you have to ensure that your black book is not available to the outsider. Next. Now, uh, this is again one of the precautions. Do not respond to messages from unknown source requesting personal and financial details. Do not respond to suspicious emails. Do not transfer money to any untrusted unknown account. Remember, you can never win a lottery if you have not participated in it. Then always verify the correctness of the domain of the email ID. Now, this is something uh, I would like to elaborate slightly further because many times you will uh, get some kind of uh, strange messages from the income tax. And if you go into detail of the email address, email ID, you will find that probably income tax has been spelled wrongly. Instead of I-N-C-O-M-E, it will be I-I-N. So this kind of uh, chota mota changes they do so that you do not notice and you feel threatened by the messages that you get. You feel threatened by the emails that you get from the government agencies. I mean, you feel that these are government agencies but actually these are all fraudsters who try to use email ID, which is very similar to the official ID. So in this case, one has to be very careful. Just remember that all government websites have either gov.in or nic.in as part of their web address. So if you find that there is any change here and there, please ensure that you do not correspond with these fraudulent sites. Then you should also have a proper uh, spam filters if possible uh, on your email account. Uh, again, do not panic if you receive a call saying that your card is blocked. Do not share any information, PIN, password, CVV number, OTP with anybody. Nobody is going to ask you for this kind of uh, sensitive details. And if someone is asking for them, Rest assured that he must be a fraudster. Next. Now, uh, this is the skimming thing. You know, there's, there's something called RFID, that is radio frequency identification. Uh, for contactless payment technology, uh, these kind of cards are used and they allow transactions without actual physical contact between the card and the terminal. But uh, these are. Uh, things can be misused and there's a very easy way of skimming. I mean, there is a device available. If your car is in the vicinity and that device is also somewhere in the vicinity, that device can acquire all the important details of your car. See, RFID skimming happens from a distance. Even if you are walking alongside uh, uh, the road, you will see that this lady is walking and there is a man behind who is stealing all the information from her card, from her credit card or debit card. And then he is going to use it to defraud her. There's a very simple method of uh, protecting your cards from this, which will be seen in the next slide. See, this is how you can protect. You uh, prepare a sleeve or uh, what you can do is uh, use aluminum foil, rapid around your card or you can even use aluminum foil in your wallet one side of the wallet you can just insert an aluminum card which will prevent when the card when the wallet is folded all the cards will be inside but the wallet will be having a wrapper which is of aluminum foil 
then after that uh, tampering with your card becomes extremely difficult i mean it's impossible next now uh, regarding social media what all mistakes we can commit uh, there are seven sins i call them uh, for those who are using social media providing too much of personal information i have already discussed it it is possible that discredited employees of your company if you are part of a company while interacting with each other might share some very important information about your company this should also be prevented so all your employees should be warned about using social media for describing or criticizing the activities in your company or in your factory then uh, there could be malware which is corrupted links which are a potential threat to your device never try to enter uh, this kind of uh, apps that are likely to be malware then there is another thing called catfishing we have already discussed this i said uh, as i said honey traps uh, through online dating apps that is called catfishing house breaking crimes i have already uh, described to you what happens if you share too much of details about your vacation the criminal is likely to misuse that opportunity and uh, when you are gallivanting somewhere else you are likely to have a house breaking in your house then a new social media account this again is an important uh, point many people are very fond of opening social media accounts on everything there are some people who are on facebook also on instagram also telegram also basically you want to be popular you want to be easily accessible all that is good but it's been my experience that you could possibly use one or two social media accounts not more than that there is no point in having too many because if you do not use those uh, social media accounts frequently uh, if you do not maintain online presence continuously then somebody else might hack in and might misuse that account because he will be or she will be uh, putting out information which might be misguiding which might do damage to your reputation also so have social media accounts but have a limited number which is manageable you should not simply go on to everything that is available on the net and then unsecured mobile devices this is a big threat see many times uh, losing mobile of course is a very big thing and i don't have to describe what all can happen but many times what happens is you give your mobile for charging or for repairs this is where uh, the mobile is likely to be misused unless you have a very strong password but then if the mobile is to be repaired you have to share the password also so the best thing is if there is any sensitive information on your mobile before sending that mobile for any kind of repairs or let me say before giving that mobile to anybody else for long period please try to delete or remove any sensitive information that is available on that mobile next now uh, these are general safety uh, tips uh, is just a repetition of what has been told always keep your systems devices updated with latest patches protect systems or devices through security software always download software or applications from known trusted sources ensure that all devices and accounts are protected using strong pin or password passcode never share your pin or password with anybody do not share your net banking password one time otp atm or phone banking pin cvv number etc always change the default admin password on your wifi this again is important if you are staying at a common, at a place which is used, being used by, by many a strong word known only to you but as i said if you can't remember please keep it somewhere safe if you have noted it down somewhere please keep it somewhere safe uh be cautious while browsing through a public wifi now this again if you are using uh, a studio outside or uh, if you are you are going to a uh, cafe uh, 
where this kind of facility is available, you have to be doubly cautious. Especially uh, this happens to people who travel uh, a lot. Uh, you are in a five star hotel and you feel that because it's five star, everything is well protected. It is not. You use the lobby computer and uh, if you do uh, some kind of a financial transaction there and if you do not take enough precautions, it's quite likely that the information that has been that has got stored there uh, rightly or wrongly will be misused by somebody else. So be cautious while browsing through a public Wi-Fi. Avoid logging in to personal and professional accounts, email or banking uh, if you are using uh, the devices which are available to the whole public, especially in a hotel. Next. Always use virtual keyboard because uh, if you are using a public computer, the keyboards are very uh, sensitive in a sense. There are certain devices which will remember the keys which you have used. And that information can be misused again to break into uh, your account and steal the information uh, that is there. Ensure to delete browsing history from web browser. Like I said, if you are using a hotel laptop or hotel computer, after your work is done, please delete the browsing history without fail because otherwise the information will be misused by a criminal. To scan all email attachments for viruses. You know, we have, uh, especially uh, in India, we find that we do not use any protection. And because of that, uh, we don't really care about the viruses. Please don't do that. A bit of money spent will be worthwhile. Avoid downloading email attachments received in emails from unknown or untrusted sources. Be careful while sharing identity proof documents. Note IEMEI code on your cell phone. This is again, is, it's very, very necessary because if at all you lose your phone, this is the code that is going to, to be used to track it as well as to block it. So either way, IEMEI code of your cell number is uh, cell phone is very important and it should be noted down the moment you get a, uh, a new device. Observe your surroundings for schemas. Normally, in a public place, if you are cautious, um, from the way the people uh, move about, from their body language, you'll be able to find out who is a fraudster, who is hanging around for no reason, who is trying to uh, watch you carefully, who is standing behind you in the ATM queue, again, for a very long time. All these things, you know, they indicate that the person probably has something else on his mind. Then please discuss safe internet practices and netiquettes with your friends regularly because they might be knowing the latest thing. Motivate them to learn more about cyber crimes. Now, let me tell you something. This is something uh, you have to share with the next generation. They are very tech savvy, but they are immature. And many times, uh, you know, while trying to show that they are tech savvy they do certain mistakes and those mistakes get exploited by the fraudsters and if you think that you are compromised your account is compromised your mobile is compromised your laptop is compromised please inform authorities immediately and that also without destroying the evidence next so where to report a cyber fraud visit the nearest police station now, normally people do not like to visit police station because there is some kind of opprobrium attached to a police station. But the more you delay, uh, the less chances of detection. So the best thing is visit the nearest police station. At the most, what will happen is police station will direct you to uh, the cyber crime cell and they will say, uh, we don't register these offenses here, but they will give you the cyber crime number. Uh, please contact the cyber crime cell and uh, uh, please use that to report this cyber crime complaint you can do it online or you can even visit national cyber crime reporting portal and i have given the details of, on how this portal can be accessed cybercrime.in and in this portal there are two sections one section is to report crimes related to women and children and the other section is to report other types of cyber crimes 
you can also file a complaint offline by dialing the helpline number 155260 i will repeat the number 155260 in case receive or come across a fraudulent sms email link phone call asking for your sensitive personal information report it to if you are in maharashtra report it to maharashtra cyber web portal uh, and it is www.reportfishing.in i am sure every state has a similar number please uh, note down these numbers and use them if necessary then refer to the latest advisories which are issued by crt.in and uh, i have given again the uh, website link https www.crt.in.org.in it's not dot it's not dash in dot org dot in so uh, these are various ways of informing the authorities and now uh, believe me the police have uh, become quite cyber savvy there were days when uh, people police did not understand much about the cyber crimes there were also occasions when they would go and uh, seize the monitor rather than seizing the psu now those things have uh, cpu sorry the 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 things have changed police have become quite savvy we have experts and not only that police are also privy to information that they can gather from other cyber experts and they will help you to crack the case as you know most of the cyber crimes are very complicated and is best thing to uh contact uh, the authority as early as possible and the authorities will be able to guide you appropriately next to report lost or stolen mobiles file first information report with the police post filing fir inform department of telecommunication that is dot i have given the helpline number it is 14422 or file online complaint uh, the details have been given central equipment identity register ceir portal and the link of the ceir is also available you can google all this information so i do not want to go into uh, the details but after verification dot will ensure that the phone gets blacklisted it is blocked from further use and in addition to this if anyone tries to use the device using a different sim card also the service provider will identify the new user new user and inform the police so uh, these are the ways uh, you can inform the authorities if cyber crime has been committed next now these are annexures uh, do we have time no time uh, so sir yeah we have 10 here. minutes okay yes, okay we can go ahead. we'll stop here and if there are any questions i will try to answer them but believe me i am not an expert i have just gathered this information Uh, for you. No, sir. Okay. Sir, I think we can go ahead for some more time. It's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, okay. Then okay. Uh, yeah. uh, this is about the virus attack on PC and laptops. Critical information uh, on our computer or laptop. Uh, so the protection for that is absolutely essential because there could be virus attacks through external sources. a virus can enter the computer through external devices and what are the external devices it's pen drive the innocuous looking pen drive somebody passes on the pen drive to you saying that it has some very interesting uh, pictures or stories and you will take that you will plug it in and you will find that your laptop has been compromised so uh, one has to be very careful about these things then there could be a virus attack by downloading files from an untrusted website now this is very common and in fact old people those who have a lot of time they keep on browsing all kinds of websites and uh, for various reasons i do not want to spell out but this is where the temptation lies and believe me most of the cyber crimes they occur only when you are tempted or when you go for the greed than your need so these are the things which take you nearer to the cyber criminal so virus attack by downloading files from untrusted websites please do not download any material unless it is absolutely necessary and 
even if it is necessary, not from an untrusted website. Then virus attack by installation of malicious software. Now this is something a person can do deliberately. When you have uh, sent your computer or your uh, mobile for repairs, not only that, some people would deliberately send files to you which look very tempting, which may have some very uh, interesting material or information or photographs. But if they are coming from untrusted sources, please do not open those files. Please do not open those emails. Do not uh, try to download that material, although it may be very tempting because these are all attempts basically to get into your asset. Next. So what are the Hello, precautions uh, to be taken? Uh, next, I think this one. Ah, okay. Never download, Hello, install pirated software applications. Do not click on the URL links provided in the suspicious email or SMS, even if they look genuine. As I said, you have to see the email address very carefully. Always check HTTPS, which appears in the website address address bar before making online transaction and here s stands for secure so if you find http but not https then it's not a safe website so these are very small things but you have to remember and you have to be careful and never get carried away thinking that you have done online transactions 100 times I have been doing an online transactions for the last so many years. I cannot go wrong. It is not so. The moment you are lax, the moment you ignore certain things, the moment you ignore precautions, you are likely to face a big problem. So always use genuine software and applications to avoid potential security lapses. Genuine software gets regular updates and please keep on regularly updating. Uh, your devices and always read the terms and conditions before installation of any application best thing is if you ask me I'm, I'm slightly illiterate on these matters best thing is to have only those apps which you really need there is no point in going for an app simply because it looks attractive and especially games etc I would say you never know when a game app has been loaded with virus so best thing is to avoid these uh, uh, playing games uh, using the uh, mobile or using your laptop next sir have sir, you finished? we are getting call from mp yeah either uh, are you trading on share etc all the time yeah. and they are changing the number yes so how to risk them uh, Baba sir, Baba sir, I sorry to interrupt, but let sir finish it first, and then we will take the questions. Thank you. Uh, I think we have finished more or less, have we? Yes, sir. Almost. Yeah. 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 Next slide. Next slide. Yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. We have finished. So now, yeah, we can take the question. The questions. Uh, yes. Not to get tempted by you know this Madhya Pradesh and uh, Andhra Pradesh kind of. Uh, information or uh, you know information seeking sms's do not indulge in uh, those activities at all the best way is to avoid anything which looks suspicious or which looks uncommon or which looks unknown we are locking okay, but again, again they are utilizing different different numbers yeah i know best thing is keep on blocking those numbers as you see them that is what i keep yeah. on doing Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, I think Mr. Phule wants to. Colonel Phule. Good evening, uh, Mr. Umra Nikkar. My question is very simple. Uh, yesterday, uh, Ravi pra Shankar Prashad and uh, Javdekar have passed a yeah. uh, lot of stricter uh, IT rules and uh, software and social media rules. Yeah. Now, whatever I have gathered from uh, your uh, lecture today is yes more than greed more than requirement and all those things is very correct but that is at the user end 
yeah what is the significance of the rules passed yesterday by the government of india which is mandatory on the originators does it yeah. help the police department from crime yeah cyber crime especially thank yeah. you so you know uh, these rules are very interesting and one really needs to study them uh, uh, for a much longer period but my offhand uh, impression is this that they want to uh, bring in a certain set of rules whereby they will be able to ensure that the web does not carry information that is damaging to national security damaging to reputation and uh, these rules will be supervised by an agency that agency has still not been uh, finalized i mean the name has come out but the rules uh, sub rules have not come out so ultimately the devil lie in, will lie in details only when you get all the details of what has been stated uh, one will be able to study it and come to some conclusion so uh, right now this is the only answer i can give you but there's always going to be a tussle between the government uh, the the social media uh, uh, controllers I mean, like, uh, big controllers like you know uh, for example facebook and things like that and uh, there are privacy issues there are issues uh, whereby there is a feeling that the social media are basically exploiting the news and exploiting the data that is available to them uh, if the government tries to control then people are going to say that you are being authoritarian you are uh, denying the freedom of uh, thought freedom of action and things like that but there has to be some reasonable restriction put on to uh, these uh, apps as well as these platforms thank you thank you mr umrani sir thank you very much thank you for this sir uh, any questions uh, yes sir yes. Yes, ma'am yes yes good evening sir i have a question yeah. uh, sir there is a it act uh, hey uh, oh. how much it is powerful and useful for yeah. all the fishing purposes and controlling the things yeah. Yeah. What is the question? The question is, uh, yeah, the question is, yeah. the IT Act is 2012, so it is very powerful and useful. Uh, social media, defamation, bhaana, ke bhaa, ya se frauds, what is the difference between the two? You know, I uh, am glad you asked this question. But as you know, most of the uh, laws or acts which are promulgated by the government, unless go they go through the acid test of uh, being judged in various courts it's very difficult to come to conclusion whether they are going to prove uh, very useful or not and the courts in india uh, come up with uh, uh, judgments and interpretations which are very varied so at times you will find that these acts uh, are quite useful but at times you might also feel that these acts are not as useful as expected of them. So uh, we are in that gray area where the act has been tested, but only partially by the various courts. And unfortunately, we have to go by the interpretation of the court rather than the letter or spirit of the law. Okay. Uh, just the Karunia acts us of Manda, you have fire, were great launch Karun get a son of police and Nas Pahilanda Yasaga Gustina don't have a laptop. Police and Kurun Yalevel were Sarkarla Kahi Suchana Kima suggestions Galelia ahead Kaso that they have act just the reform Karushakti and just the strict Banvushakti. A Shadrushini Kai Sudharna Suchana Galelia Hitka. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the police in India are treated as law enforcers, uh, not uh, lawmakers. <laughs> so nobody really asks us for our opinion or what is our experience in the field. Uh, but then uh, once in a while, we do come up with uh, certain suggestions and we keep on passing on to the government, saying that these are the lectures that we noticed during the investigation. But ultimate authority, when it comes to any law, uh, rests with the uh, with the courts only. And since the courts are liable to uh, give different interpretations to the same text that is uh, available in the in the act, uh, one is rather wary in uh, passing comments on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
ओके थैंक यू सर ओके एनीवन सर वी हैव ऑडियंस ऑन यूट्यूब आल्सो देयर इज वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम यूट्यूब सो आई जस्ट वांट टू आस्क एनीवन एल्स इन द मीटिंग हैव एस क्वेश्चन प्लीज रेज योर हैंड सो द क्वेश्चन सेज is there any control to avoid bogus website of reputed organization sorry uh, can you please repeat it uh, yes sir uh, is, there, is any there any control to avoid bogus website of reputed organizations uh, it happens no yeah yeah uh, main thing is you know uh, when you see the website you have to see the exact nomenclature many times the trick is in the nomenclature the words used are not correct or they are not spelt well Uh, they are spelled in a very different manner so th this is one indication that the website is uh, fraudulent the other thing is the content if you find that suddenly uh, a renowned organization is indulging in activities which are not really part of its uh, charter then you start asking questions as to why is it that suddenly the content has come up which has no relevance to that organization so these are some of the ways you can uh, detect the Fraudulent sites. Right, sir. Thank you. Arena, sir, do you have a question? Ah, uh, Mr. Umrani, sir. Thank you very much. It was a very useful presentation. We have many takeaways from your lecture today. Personally, I have seen uh, one point I have observed is that don't delete the evidence. Yeah. So this is very important. I only want to have some sort of advice from you. Whenever there is a problem, we go to the police station. and the yes. police station normally avoid to take any fir what should we do and how to impress on them that they should be taking the fir so uh, you see there are two three ways of you know sort of uh, forcing the police to do their duty i am very sorry to say these things uh, but one of them is give them in writing you know if you go and you start discussing things with the police uh, they will try to avoid you okay but if you give something in writing they have to take cognizance and the best thing is to make three copies of it one you give to the police station the other is directed to the dcp and the third is directed to the commissioner or uh, similar authority if they know that someone is going to supervise and someone is going to uh, act on the application then they will normally take notice and now okay. cyber crime has not remained you know as uh, difficult to understand as it used to be so it I used to be very uh, yes uh, attitude changes things are changing but really it was a very difficult time at one time we lost 10000 in an atm and the police station did not take the complaint at all anyway now Sir, as you said things yeah, are changing i i know uh, many times this happens because the police themselves are at a loss to understand what has happened and they told me to that police station they yes sir they told me what can we take your complaint we have lost our salary in bombay police station <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what they were telling yeah okay. yeah thank yeah. you sir thank you very much thank you, thank you. Ma'am, please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sir, one question: Can we register FIRs online for cyber crimes or any other crimes, or we have to go to the police station? No. In fact, now there is a facility uh, whereby you can register FIRs online. But you know, as a follow-up, I will always advise the best thing is to at least have a written complaint and send it by registered mode if the, if you uh, can't go physically. Uh, it's always better to keep more than one police authority informed about what has happened uh, the hope is that uh, one of them will act at least <laughs> okay okay thank you sir very very useful information yeah thank you ma'am for an excellent question yes uh, lakkar sir sir your uh, please please unmute yourself sir Uh, it's not a question. Actually, I just wanted to add one more thing about the credit card frauds. Shall I add one thing? Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, these credit card frauds in India, RBI is giving good backup. Yeah, they are giving really good backup. But when you are on international tour, RBI is not giving any backup to that. Usually, the frauds internationally they take. They first they will take away one dollar or one uh, one thing, and as soon as you get that. Uh, SMS from the bank, yeah. Because you should have that facility when you go abroad. That you should have that. Uh, you should get activated that SMS at least bank SMS. 
Yeah. So as so when you get that SMS, immediately you must call to the bank and block your card. Yeah. Otherwise, the, the second time they will take more uh, amount, and you will think that RBI will when I will go to uh, my own country, or when you come back, or from there itself. If you happen to lodge a complaint with RBI, yeah, you know the RBI ombudsman also. They said that internationally we don't deal with this because we do have your OTP good system, which is generally yeah. usually not available throughout the other countries. Most of the countries, developed countries also, this system is not there. So yeah. the people who are going outside uh, any type of card, even though your uh, for instance card also, if you are having it, so we should be careful about that. Thank you, sir. But normally, if you have an internationally activated card, yeah, yeah, then uh, I have not come across any problems uh, with an internationally activated card because then the banks are in continuous touch with each other, and even if there is a fraudulent transaction, the, they immediately take action to block the card. of course blocking the card becomes counteractive because then you have lost all the money in the sense it is blocked so uh, you can't go for your extra purchases <laughs> when you are abroad but normally if the card has been uh, internationally uh, activated uh, you uh, face less number of uh, difficulties i would say and uh, just in that I can, i can add one thing this yeah. most of nowadays most of the cards are international activated cards most of the cards yeah. Uh, hardly uh, any card you find that only it is uh, useful in india so these cards when you are here usually uh, these frauds are not taking place but uh, uh, even though you, sometimes you are dis, uh, deactivated your international dues also so when you go out you have to activate international dues and once you are used uh, activate your international dues any fraud happen on your credit card debit card rbi is not giving a backup to that Yeah, I have got a good example for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Lakari sir. Thanks for joining. Okay. Uh, if there is any question, otherwise we will close. Uh, okay. I think, sir. Yeah, we would like to close. So, uh, ma'am, you want to say something? i would like to thank sir for really giving us some very very useful information and we've got a lot of people who are thank you yes you deserve it thank you yes. and thank you, thank you uh, for uh, being so patient because i thought probably most of the people are going to run away when i said no, no, no. <laughs> giving information it was a bit lengthy but i thought uh, i have to make it as useful as possible and thank you yashoda for uh, doing all the editing work and actually this is rajay you deserve the credit because i didn't want to do this because it was no sir we are really happy that you could speak thank you yes it's a good lecture thank you so much yes thank you thank you thank you so much so we cannot talk anything that is the thing <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you so much everybody for joining and thank you so for uh, almost covering everything and uh, uh, this particular session will be available on youtube so if you are missing out or uh, if you really want to suggest this lecture to someone else who has not been able to join today please do that please share the link with them thank you so much see you thank you thank you thank you bye this is rajay thank you we thank barda chemistry thank you very much <laughs> okay thank you uh